Welcome back, kids. Yesterday, today, and forever. Let's learn about God. away and I was sleeping. What happened? What's going on? Okay, well, I was calling you for like 20 minutes, Erin. Okay, relax, Erin. You just only called us less than a minute. It took you long enough. Come on, man. Listen, man, I was up all night, you know, stressing about the after, after, after show with Erin because Angie isn't here and she's the one who's always coordinating what's going on behind the scenes. And now I gotta handle the lights, cameras, and the live action. Okay, I know Erin but you won't believe what I just booked for our next gig. It's, I know it's not better than this after, after, after show, that's for sure. We got approved for the Battles of the Bible Game Nights! For real, Arnie, that's awesome. I've been scripting this for so long. I know, how awesome is it going to be to invite some of the Bible's greatest warriors for the challenging game of who fought the best? Guys, 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 I am so stoked. We have to have Benaya and Samson. I don't care, that is gonna be quite the show. This is gonna be better than anything we've ever produced, that's for sure. Oh wait, I even have a cooler idea. What if we build two teams of the Bible's great warriors? What do you mean by that? That doesn't make sense. Okay, okay, Aaron, imagine this. Team David, Samson, Joshua versus Team Benaya, Gideon, and Barak. That is epic. My guess is on Team David. Samson's up that team by like 1,000 men. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Are you kidding me, guys? Team Benaya already is equivalent to more than 1,000 men. Don't y'all know he was the greatest out of the 30 mighty men? And not only that, David's the number one, he's David's number one bodyguard. So he has to be even better than David himself. I mean, like, if you're gonna protect the king, you gotta be stronger than the king. Okay, I rest my case. This battle can cause such a great response from our audience. We can increase polls, viewerships, comments. Wow, I'm so excited. I gotta reprogram the imagination station to make sure we can get all these heroes from different timelines of the Bible together in one place. This is gonna be so much fun. Aksha, please make sure that you run some operative checks on the imagination station to ensure that we have no setbacks or malfunctions. We don't even have Johnny with us to help us. So you know what, you need to do this Aksha, okay? Of and we have to make sure this goes right and proper so we're successful, okay? Okay, uh, I'm just gonna need some time to work on the quantum physics and then try to fix the screwdriver of that part and then after I go through the quantum physics I can finally find a linear equation for that and then I can write the calculations and that can bring them here. Yeah, oh, you know what, I got you. I understood only 10% of that, but you know, I'm here. Let me know if you need anything, I got you. Erin, you're not helping her, okay? You have to work on the lights, the camera, the scripting, the games, the snacks, all of that. You guys, we have our own responsibilities. We can't be overlapping, okay? Well, that calls for some kind of, I guess, cool optical illusion. Would you look at that, kids? I guess I learned the cool snapping that Arnie does as well. Hold up, if we're gonna do all this work and Aaron is covering the entire production of this episode. Yep, I'm busy. Arnie, what are you gonna do? Well, you guys, you know, I gotta go. Make sure you do your things and I'll catch up with you guys later. Okay. Where did she go? Not again. Hey kids, welcome back to another episode of Kids Corner. I think it's only fair that we start off with some worship. So kids, are you ready to join me? Aksha, where'd you come from? Well, class one of the imagination station, and there was a malfunction. A malfunction? Okay, you know what? We can stress about that later. I think you should join us in worship because it's perfect timing. <laughs> so, kids, are you ready? Let's start. There's a table that you prepared for me in the present. Of 
Great catching up with you, and yeah, 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 yeah. I did that, and no, I, I also did that too. Don't worry, don't worry. Yes, yes, yes. I, I, just, I already got that covered. I got, you. I got, it, I got, it, I got it. Oh yeah. Well, Ag, um, I guess it looks like we're breaking up. I can't hear you. What? But it, I don't know. Huh? huh? Okay, okay. Ah, I think you. Bye, bye, bye. Finally, listen, I can do it, I know what to do. Listen, that was close, right? But I guess, you know, we just gotta make sure. She just wanted me to make sure everything, right? Sofas, check a Rooney. Mugs, check, I know they're, I know they're backstage. Ch chicken nuggets for Gideon, check it, check it, check. Okay, now we gotta got carrots for Daniel. <gasps> Daniel, oh my gosh, no, 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 not Daniel. It's supposed to be David, all right, check. Okay, well, Angel said one more thing. One more thing. Ah, oh, man, this is why she always yells at me for not listening. I can't be talking over her. Okay, what was it? What was it? Think. Think. 
Dang. Okay, Aaron, are you ready? Are you feeling okay? Do you need to get deodorant? Are, are you sure you're not sweating? Like, it's okay if you're nervous because that's totally okay. Are you feeling okay? Do I need to get you something? No, I'm, I'm good. What are, you, are you okay? You're the one who seems a little bit nervous and overwhelmed. Okay, well, yeah, okay. Maybe I'm just a little bit nervous, but I'm overall fine. fine. I'm okay. Yeah. You know, right? Of course, everything's gonna be fine. Everyone's gonna watch it. Everyone's gonna, you know, enjoy it. But yeah. at the same time, if we screw this up and it's a total failure, no one's gonna watch it and we're gonna get booed. And I mean, what would we do then, right? But it's fine. Everything is gonna be great because God is great and uh, we're yeah, okay, yeah, right, Aaron? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Aaron? Yeah, um, Arnie, either you have to believe right now or you don't because you freaking out is freaking me out. Guys, kids, what if you're, what if she's right? What if Arnie is right? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, let's just think this through. Are we, can we do this? Can we do this? All right, guys, are you ready? Um, are you guys mic'd up? Are you mic'd up? Mics! That's what it was. Oh, no, Angie. I remember Angie was telling me that. That's what we're missing. Oh, wait, wait, that we're missing that. We are doomed. We are so doomed. Okay, I knew it. I knew we wouldn't be able to do this. It's over. We're not capable of pulling something this epic. I'm so sorry, guys. I should have given up yesterday I, before we even thought about putting this into action. I'm so sorry, guys. Whoa, what is happening? What is up with all this negativity and distrust? Hello, did everyone forget about Jesus? Like... He's right here with us, and at the end of the day, this program isn't for us or for our fame. Neither for the words either. It's all for the glory of God, so we can teach something valuable to the children around the world. You know what? Aksha's right, Aaron. You know, what are we doing panicking like this? The Bible clearly says in Psalms chapter 28, verse 7, The Lord is my strength and my shield. In Him my heart trusts and I am helped. It also says in Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3, that you keep Him in perfect peace, whose mind stays on you, because He trusts in you. The entire Bible is intertwined with the trust in God to be our refuge in hard times, but we be careful not to trust and just trust at the same time. What do you, what do you mean? Okay, well think about this. Can you be in two places at once? Uh, no. Can you serve two masters? Legally? No, no, no. Exactly. In the same way, the Bible says in James chapter 1, verse 6, But when you ask him to be sure that your faith is in God alone, do not waver for the person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as the wave of the sea that blown and tossed by the wind. But what does that mean, Aksha? Essentially, what James here writes is that you can't say you trust God or ask for help, but divide your trust up in pieces. So bits, if you're afraid, nervous, panicking, and low. Instead, your trust must be fully in God alone because don't be like a seesaw going up and down. Stay steady in your trust or else you'll be like a messy wave getting tossed in a wild storm. And I don't think anyone wants to look like that. You know what? Definitely not. Could you imagine my hair going through like strong winds? Like I could never. Not just your hair, Arnie, but most importantly, your soul and your relationship with God. If you want to stay steady victories and steady results in your life, you need to be steady in trust. If your trust is unwavering, then your victorious will never waver either. Aksha, you are right. This is such an eye-opener. I can't tell you how many times I've been feeling like I'm always tossed up in this wave. And I think it's because my trust has been just so unsteady, right? Like, I might just say I trust God, but then my actions are literally proving the opposite. And parts of me always keep doubting and doubt. And that's why probably throughout my life, all the battles that I am, I fear more fear. I feel more fearful than actually being confident. You know, and even though I had victory in the end because Jesus never leaves or abandons me, I always kind of feel, feel silly because why did I doubt him in the first place? The worry brings out the worst in me. I immediately feel defeated even though I haven't even tried. Yeah, but hmm, kids. I wonder if you ever felt that way too. Have you ever been in a situation where the mountain looks so huge from where you're standing and it feels like it's almost impossible to climb? But by the time you actually walk closer to that mountain, you realize it was just the size of a little step. It wasn't even that big. And all you had to do was walk up to the mountain and its size for what it is. Sometimes just trust makes us view the situation where it's really from us seeing the truth. And that's something we can conquer. That's why Paul wrote in Romans chapter 8, verse 37, No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Come to think of it, the things Paul is referring to is the context preceding the scripture. 
It's all about trials and tribulations we'd walk through, but we'll make it through because Christ is for us, not against us. Kids, you can take out your Bible right now and read it for us. In Romans chapter 8, verse 31 to 34, it says, Exactly. As long as we trust in God, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger of, or sword? Absolutely not. Come to think of it, each and every single warrior of the Bible brought to battle Gideon, David, Samson, Barak, Benaiah, Joshua, none of them were confident from the beginning actually. We even learned a couple of weeks ago on Kids Corner how many times Gideon tested God to make sure he was truly equipped for the battle. And take David's life, for example, when his whole family was kidnapped from the horror that took place in Ziklag. Ziklag was raided and burned by the Amalekites, women and children taken captive. You know what David did? He wept. He had no strength left. People wanted to stone him to death. But David got victory because he found strength in the Lord, his refuge, the God of salvation, the one whom he trusted and approached God and he asked him, what shall I do? And God said, pursue them, which he did. And David won this battle because his greatest weapon was trusting in God. They recovered from everything that Amalekites had taken. Nothing was missing, young or old, boy or girl, plunder, or anything else they had taken. David brought everything back. Putting his trust in God made David one of the Bible's most noble warriors and soldiers. Let's take Brock too. For instance, the Israelite general Brock was not eager to fight the large number of Canaanite kings. When you look at the odds he faced, it was hardly surprising. His enemy was more numerous, better equipped, and had excellent morale. And their technology was far more superior because they controlled metal making, so their weaponry was tougher than anything that Barak could produce. Also, their enemy general, Sisera, had well-disciplined and seasoned troops as well. As far as Brock could see, facing them would be death, but eventually he persuaded to fight one of the most forceful women in the Bible, Deborah. She convinced him that winning the battle was not just a question of equipment and training, but strategy as well as she had a plan. Trust in God? You got it. At this stage, God stepped in and set a rainstorm, which not only slowed down the chariots, but brought them to a standstill. Brock's Israelite army had excelled at hand-to-hand -hand combat and use of slingshots and were able to vanquish their army. All in all, every warrior of the Bible going to battle never had confidence of strength within themselves. Each one's success was all reliant on their trust in God, because trust in God is a weapon. That's why David sings this over and over again in Psalms 18 verse 2. I love you, God. You make me strong. God is my bedrock under my feet, the castle in which I live, my rescuing knight, my God, the high crag where I run for dear life, hiding behind the boulders safe in the granite hideout. This scripture is actually from the message translation and I love this expansion of the scripture because it describes everything a warrior would experience in the midst of a battle. Only someone trapped, learning for their life, hiding from granite behind boulders could truly sing the victory brought forth through the simple concept of just trusting in the Lord. Kids, you're probably more familiar with the KJV translation. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. You see, David even says, when I'm in those situations and though I have been trusting God, the only thing I can rely on is what he gave me strength. Wow, I feel so strong inside. I don't know how to describe this feeling. That is confidence in God and trust. No matter what we face, you'll become, you'll become victorious because God fights for you and that's a result of trusting in God. Wait, Aaron, did you plan the game section for the gig tonight? Of course I did, but you know, I kind of did it a little bit differently from what I usually do when I'm hosting. I can set up a big wrestling match between the Warriors. I think it's going to be pretty cool. I have the whole mat and everything. Okay, mm, good thing I asked because we definitely can't do that. That's a workplace safety hazard. Come on guys, we have 30 minutes to prep and I have this really cool experiment. So to the chemistry corner we go. Yes. So kids, now that we're all here and we're ready to do the experiment, we're gonna start off by getting some oil and you're gonna pour this oil into one of the containers. So what is this oil representing as you're pouring it in? Well, it's gonna be representing worry. And you know, it's good that we just write it on a piece of paper and we can just label the container. Oil. There's no certain amount that you need to put, but I'm just gonna fill it like 
one fourth of the way. That's a lot of oil. Yeah, but that's enough. Yeah. Okay. Hey kids, what does it mean to worry? Well, I think worrying is when we're kind of afraid or concerned because we don't know what's gonna go, what's gonna happen. Okay. So the next step is we're gonna pour some of this water mm -hmm. into this other cup. And you know what? I'm just gonna fill the cup all the way. Oh, is this where we're gonna add some food coloring now too? Exactly. Oh yes. You know what? So I do have a little bit of a hard sight. You know, you know what I mean. So this is gonna be super easy for me and the kids to see for sure. And you know what? We gotta bounce it out, and then we gotta add, we gotta spin it out, do a little bit of stirring so that you can. Exactly. I'm just putting like four drops in. It doesn't really matter. Okay. okay we're just gonna stir like Aaron said, Ooh. and then now we're gonna label this cup as trust. Hmm. So kids, what does it mean to trust God? Well, trusting God means that we have to remember that He's in control and knows everything. We don't need to be afraid because God is taking care of us. Does God want us to worry or trust in Him? Can we trust God and worry at the same time? Let's let our worry and trust show us the answer. Can trust and worry mix? Can they blend and be happening at the same time? So to test this, let's first pour the water in. And then next, we're going to be pouring in the oil. You know what? We need to mix it because I'm pretty sure that it can mix. Uh, do you see how you're wrong, Aaron? It looks like initially they're going to mix together, but really, they don't. They separate. Oh. Yeah. We added in more water to see if they would mix, you know, the oil and the water, but they still don't. Yeah. The oil floats to the top and the water stays at the bottom. Mm -hmm. You can see a really clear distinction between the two. Mm -hmm. And from looking at our demonstration of worry and trust, can the two be mixed together and happen at the same time? Definitely not. Our hearts cannot be fully trusting God and worrying at the same time. Those two do not mix. God wants us to trust in Him whenever we are tempted to worry because He cares for us. He's in control and knows everything that has happened in the past, is happening now in the present, and will happen in the future. God is more than worthy of all our trust. You know what, guys? I've learned so much, not only through this experiment, not through, only through the examples and the verses, but I've learned that I cannot trust God and also be worried at the same time. Kids, they don't mix. And at the end of the day, it may be hard. It may be hard to trust God. But if you just put a little bit of trust, for in the Bible it says, all you need is a faith of a mustard seed to move a mountain. So imagine if you put a little bit more of a mustard seed. Imagine how much you could do. Kids, today I want you guys to know that I know it's hard, especially as these times are coming, as every single day you're progressing in this world. I know it's hard, but kids, when you trust the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, I promise positive results will come out. So today, how about we make a decision, and as we're going to pray, and Arnie's going to end us off in prayer, how about we make a decision today that even if we're surrounded and we're fighting so many things and so many things around us are always trying to bring us down, how about we trust God and we let the God that was with David, with Joshua, with Benaiah, with Samuel, Samson, with all these warriors, be that same God that's going to be with us and fighting all our battles. So kids, how about we close our eyes and let's let Arnie pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you for teaching us that trust and worry do not mix together. Oh, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, you have called us to place all your trust in you. Oh, Heavenly Father, you who are so capable. Oh, Heavenly Father, you who are omnipotent, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can put your put our trust in you and you'll never fail us, oh, Heavenly Father. You never fail David and you'll never fail us, Lord Jesus. So as we remember the promise for this year, Lord Jesus, the year of fulfillment, Lord Jesus, let us put our trust in the God of Jacob, Oh, Heavenly Father, the one that is our refuge, the one that will wipe away our tears, the one that has 
that will give all the promises that you have promised us, O Heavenly Father, and the one that destroys our enemies and not us, Lord Jesus. That is the God that we trust. That is the God that we will continue to trust, O Heavenly Father. So I pray for every single one of us members and the kids watching, O Heavenly Father. Lord Jesus, we will face trials and tribulations, O Heavenly Father, but no matter what, Lord Jesus, let, her, let us focus on you. Let, her, let, her, let us set our eyes on you, O Heavenly Father. Let us know that we are set apart from the world, O Heavenly Father, because we put our trust in you, O Heavenly Father. So I thank you for the way that you have strengthened us throughout this lesson, O Heavenly Father. The way that you teach us to put our trust in you, O Heavenly Father. We thank you for being so good, O Heavenly Father. So for being so trustworthy, O Heavenly Father. We give all glory and honor and praise and trust in you, O Heavenly Father. We thank you for all that you have done, all that you are going to do. In all your name we say, Amen. Amen. Awesome kids. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Kids Corner. But I'm sorry, we gotta cut this a little bit short because we gotta run. We gotta make sure the lights camera action everything is good and we got to make sure our guests are all clear and they're ready to join the after 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 show with me so kids if you want to see that episode drop a like and don't forget to subscribe and if you want to know if we're when we post our videos which is wednesdays at seven make sure you're also clicking that bell so you get notified as well well we love you kids and i'm sorry we got to get going but don't forget to trust your lord with all your heart we love you kids and with that being said i got nothing else to say so I guess this is bye, bye kids! kids.